All right, Joey and Mako, I'm pumped for this one. Joey and Mako have had great duels before on this very channel and in the anime as well when they played in Battle City. And speaking of Battle City, I am excited to announce that the Battle City decks are nearly done. I have three more to create. That is Strings, Arcana, and Rex Raptor. Rex Raptor is sort of like a filler because there was... Rex only played a very small cameo in Battle City, but otherwise I end up with only 15 duelists. So I need someone to fill that slot. So Rex Raptor is in by default. You could say Bandit Keith, but he kind of got eliminated before he came in to Battle City, before the Battle City tournament actually started. Anyway, let's begin this duel. We're looking at Mako's perspective. We've got a Wabaku, a Dark Hole, DN Keto, the Cure Master, Monster Reborn, and Crab Turtle, which isn't a great first hand, to be honest, because Mako can't draw anything. Oh, sorry, he can't play any monsters to the field. There's Boulder Tortoise, again, six stars. Too, too strong to get to the field, though. With Wabaku and Dark Hole, Mako can stall for a little bit. He could also bring a monster back with Monster Reborn if Joey... Joey has played a face down. He could tribute it, and he could bring forth something a bit stronger. Then Mako can use Dark Hole and Monster Reborn straight after. All right, Joey has played a face down spell or trap. And he is doing just that. He has tributed... Swordsman of Landstar to bring forth Swamp Battle Guard. Mako activates Wabaku to protect 1800 life points. And he will now have the option to play Dark Hole and then Monster Reborn straight after. Okay, there's Bottom Dweller as well. Again, that's a card that can't really help Mako right now. And there it is Dark Hole, Swamp Battle Guard destroyed. Monster Reborn straight after. Good play. And Swamp Battle Guard is to the field. He could call his Boulder Tortoise, but probably better to go on the offensive with 1800, which is exactly what Mako does. And Joey is down to 6200 points. Mako draws first life point damage. He's also got that extra thousand from DN Keto, so he is 2800 life points ahead very, very early on in this duel. Joey himself also plays a Dark Hole. Swamp Battle Guard is destroyed for the second time this duel. And a face down defense. Uh, Joey not having a lot of power in his hand. And Mako again with a high level monster that he can't play. Terra King Salmon is only five stars though. It is an easy monster to summon. And Joey has tributed that face down again, which was Battle Warrior, and this time he summoned Garuzi, so another 1800 attack. And this time it's going to be Mako on the receiving end of 1800 points of damage. That'll put him down to 7200. Still a thousand points ahead of Joey, but Joey now has the field advantage. Oh, still a shell. That's not going to help Mako at all. Not a good starting hand for Mako. He's only drawn monsters with high level heat. If he drew the Crab Turtle Ritual, he could summon it very easily. All right, there's Masaki, the legendary swordsman. And this is going to be another 2,900 points off Mako. And that's going to leave him with... Uh, 430... 4,300. Okay. I couldn't math that quicker than the life point count. Here goes. Okay, Starboy, that's... That'll be able to destroy Masaki, the legendary swordsman, if he uses Steel Shell as well. Although, does Joey have anything face down? He does, and he activates it. Trap Hole. That keeps Mako's field completely clean. And I don't see Mako coming back from this. He's drawn a shocking hand. Joey still with 2,900 points of attack points ready. And there is Baby Dragon as well. So Joey not playing his stronger monsters, but he's got a massive field advantage. Mako, he might be cooked in this. In fact, Mako is going to come down to just 200 life points remaining after this attack. And you got to say that this has got to be Joey's duel. If Joey loses from here, it'll be the comeback. Comeback of the whole tournament. And another five-star monster. That is crazy. That is just about the worst possible hand Mako could have drawn. 
And apart from Kirishin, I don't think he has any more five-star monsters. The rest of these monsters are all four and below. But that is just an absolute shocker of a hand. Joey finishes off Mako's life points. However, Mako will get another chance. There is another duel to play, though Mako, to get the season point, will have to win two duels in a row from here. Well, lackluster first match, considering that the duel that they have had in the past. Let's hope we can get a better match in the second. All right. Let's load up Joey's perspective on this one. And let's grab a drink before we start. Elemental Hero. I am very keen to make Elemental Hero decks after these series. And when will Battle City be starting? I wouldn't think it would take any more than a week. In fact, it might even be a couple of days from now. All right, Joey has drawn Red Eyes on his first turn. He's also got Battle Warrior and Battle Steer in his hand. He's got Shield and Sword, interesting card, and also a Monster Reborn. So it's not a bad opening hand. Mako has to win this one. He's given it some thought, given it's only a first turn. And, all right, there we go. Down goes Seven Coloured Fish. Very, very good opening monster to draw, Seven Coloured Fish. 1,800 attack and only four stars. Battle Warriors destroyed. Mako's... Sorry, not Mako. Joey. Joey's field is empty. Ooh, there's Grave Robber. It's an interesting card as well. They can steal an opponent's magic card in their graveyard. Does cost 2,000 life points to use, so it is expensive. Anyway, um... And look at Joey's hand. He has Sword of Shield, and look at Seven Coloured Fish's defense. It is only 800. And, oh, good play. All right, Battle Steer comes to the field. Uh, Battle Warrior was brought back with Monster Reborn. And now Joey can activate Shield and Sword, which will flip attack and defense. And Battle Steer will win by 500 points and be able to remain on the field. Seven Coloured Fish is destroyed, and Joey has the advantage. If Joey can get another monster to the field and hold a turn, he can also get his Red Eyes Black Dragon to the field, which also strongest card in his deck. Mako Dark Hole. Good draw. Alright. Uh, Joey does have a Grave Robber, so he could call a Dark Hole if Mako plays something here. Oh, and it's an Aqua Spirit. Cannot be normal summoned or set, can only be special summoned by removing one from play one water monster. And Mako also played Amazon of the Seas, so this is 2900 points total hitting Joey. And Mako has got off to the start that he needed to now. He's got two monsters on the field and Joey hasn't got much to, to attack back with. Um, Aqua Spirits effect once per... Is it in your standby phase? I think you can change the battle position of an enemy monster. That's what the rest of that effect is. All right, Joey does play gra uh, Grave Robber. He brings back Dark Hole. That will destroy Mako's Amazoness of the Seas and Aqua Spirit. He, he did draw Cage Moocher of the Blue Flame. It's not a strong card. He does also take 2,000 damage from that Grave Robber card and he's got no choice. He does have to attack here. I guess. So Cage Moocher of the Blue Flame goes down and will deliver 800 points of damage. Although, not a strong card. I don't think Joey's going to be able to keep that on the field unless Mako hasn't got anything in his hand to that he can summon like he did in the last duel. And that is not the case. Enchanting Mermaid comes to the field. That'll be another 400 points off of Joey. He's down to 2,700 now. And with 6,700 left on Mako, it's a 4,000 point difference. It's going to be very, very difficult for Joey to come back from here. There's polymerization. That doesn't help him. And this could be it. Um, if Mako plays something with 1,500 or more, he will win. And... Oh, Turtle Oath. Does he have... No, he's had to use his Enchanting Mermaid on the field and one of the 
cards in his hand, which was Boulder Tortoise, which he couldn't summon without a tribute. Anyway, Crab Turtle is on the field. That's a 2550 attack, 2500 defense. Big, bulky card in this era of Yu-Gi-Oh! Crab Turtle. And Joey is down to 150 points, and it will take a miracle for Joey to come back from here. And he will not. He has drawn Remove Trap, which will not give him any help. Mako is going to pick up the second match. And a better quality duel than the first one. And just to add a little bit of more insult to injury, there's a power of Kaishin. Mako picks up the second match, and we will go to Sudden Death for this round season point. All right, who do we pick for the last match? Hopefully they have a good one because their duels in the past have all been really, really good. So Mako, and, Mako and Joey are not finished yet, either one of them. They're such an evenly balanced pair of decks as well. That's why they always give a good match. Cards of consonants. Oh, they, they leave it up there like for two seconds. You can't possibly... You can read it in your head, but you can't read it and talk it out loud. Alright, we are looking at Mako's perspective this time. There's Bottom Dweller, Yado Karu, and Spike Cedra. Not the greatest draw for monsters. Oh, Joey's got Scapegoat on his first turn. Uh, Mako's also got Fissure and a Remove Trap. Alright, Joey has started off with playing four Sheep Tokens to the field. And there is a DN Keto as well. That gives him another 1,000 points. And a face down set in defense. So Joey has five defensive shields. It's going to take Mako a long time to get through that. He's got Yado Karu, which he plays in defense. And as you see, there is Bottom Dweller and Tongyo. He does have Bottom Dweller in his hand and Polymerization. So if he draws Tongyo, he will be able to summon Deep Sea Shark, which he hasn't summoned yet in any format, any duel that we've had with Mako. Okay, Mako has played Jellyfish. Joey just passed his turn. The good thing about drawing Scapegoat on your first turn and then playing another defense is you can literally... Like, you can literally just camp there and just gain all your cards back. Mako elects to play Jellyfish in defense mode. What? Okay, I can explain why that is a good move. Um, without getting rid of any of Joey's cards on the field, you do prevent him from playing any other monsters. So if he's only got something weak as that face down card, remember, he can't tribute those sheep tokens to summon other monsters. So he has to get a six, a five or a six star monster. He can't summon red eyes with what he has on the field, even though he's got five on the field. So that's not a bad decision to wait because what Mako can do here, he can actually build up his attack force without having to worry about Joey attacking him back. The only question is how long will Mako wait for? He's just tributed twin long rods. That's only a 900 and 700 for Spike Cedra. Okay, it looks like he's decided to attack now. So with Jellyfish and Spike Cedra. All right, there goes a sheep token. And he's attacked the face down defense, which was was Cage Musha of the Blue Flame. So now Joey's scapegoat tokens are only going to last two more turns, one more turn if Mako draws another offensive monster. And now Joey's, he does have six cards in his hand, so he may be able to play back here. All right, face down, spell or trap. And he summons Tiger Axe, which will be able to destroy Jellyfish. He will get Tiger Axe destroyed straight back, but not a bad move. It's only a small amount of life points to pay. And remember, Joey does have the life point lead still. Oh, and there's Fissure as well. There goes Spike Cedra. Tiger Axe will be protected for another turn. Um, the other card maker has faced down is Yado Karu. That's a 1700 defense. Crazy Fish, good card. And Mako decides 
to activate Dark Hole, get rid of all the scapegoat tokens, get rid of Tiger Axe as well. And this could be a direct attack, 1600. Mako does have a fissure in his hand as well. So if Joey does play a monster down to get rid of Crazy Fish. Oh, Trap Hole of Spikes. He played that against Bandit Keith in the anime. Destroys the opponent's monster that was normal summon or special summon and half its attack come out of Mako's life points. All right, both fields completely bare after turn 11 and neither player has really lost really that many life points. Mako's down 900 points. Joey's still on his 9,000 since after activating his DN Kido. There's Hero of the East. Field of Strength, a Dissword Swing and Samurai from the Far East. You do that with a New Yorker accent. I think that's what that card description is actually meant to portray is Joey's New Yorker accent. Hey, Field of Strength, a Dissword Swing and Samurai from the Far East. I can't really do a New Yorker accent to be honest. Anyway, there's Fissure and that's Destroyed Hero from the East. Mako kind of had to because he hasn't got anything to play. Again, he hasn't drawn the greatest hand. Oh, and there's Monster Reborn. Good card for Joey. And he can, he will bring back Crazy Fish, which is a 1600 attack. If that hits, Mako will be down to 4400. With Joey still at 9000, there's Masaki the Legendary Swordsman as well. A card that did some damage in the first duel. Alright, 2700 altogether. That's going to leave Mako with 3300 points and he's in trouble. Looks like this actually could be it for Mako. He, he can't last any longer than two turns. Root Water, not great, but it will at least defend and attack. But it looks like Mako might be done. He hasn't drawn great cards for this duel. However, such is the nature of Yu-Gi-Oh! Just look at the duel we had last night with Mai and Mokuba. With Mai drawing that absolute horrendous hand in that third duel, and Mokuba picked up the most unlikely of victories. Anyway, Masaki the Legendary Swordsman is tributed. Garuzis comes to the field. Crazy Fish will destroy Root Water. Mako will lose 1800 points and he can only last one more turn. He needs to get something to the field. And if he drew Tongyo right now, that would be absolute mint. He doesn't. He draws Takraminus. And that's only a 1500-1200. Joey is going to lose. Sorry, Mako. Mako is going to lose this duel. Joey didn't have any life points taken off of him in this duel. It's quite amazing. Mako drew Bottom Dweller and Polymerization, but didn't have Tongyo to get that Deep Sea Shark. And he's had Crab Turtle, but he hasn't had the Crab Turtle Ritual in this game. Oh, Joey plays his giant rock guy. And that will do it. Joey defeats Mako and picks up another point for his season tally. Well, what about that? So, as I was saying earlier, yes, Battle City's production is very, very close and should be starting in no more than a week. Let's pull up our season mode score sheet and let's have a look at the next duel that is coming up. So, let me pull that up on my screen as well. All right, so we've got Paradox Brothers and Bones coming up next. We've also got Panic and Taya after that, and then Bandit Keith and Pegasus, which should be a very interesting match in a Continental Championship rematch. Well, hope you enjoyed Joey and Mako's duel. Joey picked up the win in a good fought victory. We'll be back at it again tomorrow, and hopefully Battle City... I'll try and give you more information if I do manage to get those all I need, the only decks I need is Arcana, Strings, and Rex Raptor, which is kind of an odd one to put together because you only really see him get defeated by Esperoba and give away Serpentite Dragon. But anyway, wherever you are in the world, stay safe, keep well. Thanks everyone for the support. I see the comments every day. Wherever you are in the world, farewell.